cabinet secretaries present, captains of industry, business leaders, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Good morning. We are happy to be here. I had organized my thoughts around the two functions, but on reaching here, I found that we need to do one and then the other, so I'll try to reorganize quickly <laughs> my thoughts. And I don't want to be long because this youth thing is bubbling. They are ready to go. They are impatient. They want us to get moving. And you have seen when the CEO was speaking, the machine to launch the program went on so that we can move. <laughs> that, is, that is how urgent the matter is. Um, I feel greatly honored to be part of this auspicious occasion, Youth Employment and Entrepreneurship Accelerator Initiative, <coughs> launched today. I commend the management and board of KEPSA for their effort towards youth employment and entrepreneurship as it's a key initiative to promoting socioeconomic growth and transformation. KEPSA has been, uh, has been keen on SME accelerator programs which supports SMEs in quickly increasing the value of their businesses by undertaking intensive training and mentorship to bolster their current strategies, accelerate their growth, and help them pivot or adjust their strategy due to new information about their target market. According to the Kenya National Bureau of Statistics, approximately 800,000 young Kenyans enter the labor market every year. However, the country's, year, the country's years of strong economic growth have created jobs, but at a rate that is too low to absorb the rapidly growing population. Ladies and gentlemen, youth unemployment in Kenya is estimated at 38.9%, with an estimated 1 million young people getting into the labor market every year from our academic institutions. However, the economy has not matched the supply in generation of new jobs. Experts have warned us of the youth time bomb occasioned by the jobless youth bulge. In fact, 75% of Kenya's population is below the age of 35 years. This population is a big blessing to this nation. We must plan well and invest in our youth to reap our demographic dividend ahead of Kenya's Vision 2030 and Africa Union's Agenda 2063. We note with appreciation that the Kenya Youth Employment and Entrepreneurship Program is an innovative and comprehensive job creation initiative with an overall goal of creating one million employment and entrepreneurship opportunities for youth in Kenya. Moreover, this initiative seeks to unlock the potential of small and medium enterprises through tailored support services that allow them to grow and create jobs for the young people. I am informed that this program will leverage technology and digital transformation. This is by scaling the businesses through catalytic interventions like promotion of business process, outsourcing as a way of enhancing efficiency by digitalization of services to accelerate success access to markets regionally and globally. We keenly play into ensuing digital evolution across the world. Kenya cannot afford to be left behind since we have one of the fastest internet connectivity and penetration in Africa. What we do with the internet connectivity will make the difference. What we do with the penetration will make the difference and convert this resource to grab and rule the international market, but we must also have cutting edge products and services. This is why we are also emphasizing market oriented, demand driven skills. I urge KEPSA to closely work with the TVET institutions to bridge the gap between training and industry. As I conclude, the Kenya Kwanzaa government is committed to reducing bureaucracies, to reduce the cost of production, and doing businesses online and offline. This is because we understand the importance of a friendly business environment for coming and established expenditure of 9,000 per family. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, 
I want to say that I'm very happy to be here. And uh, we have come here early. And I'm ready to come here at 5 a.m. If we are discussing opportunities for our young people. I must do full disclosure. From a purely self, selfish perspective, President William Ruto and I owe tons of gratitude to our young people who overwhelmingly voted us into office. Lazima turudisha mukono. We want to be honest. We owe these young people some interventions of one kind or another. Many people have asked me how they can become friends with President William Bruton. I want to share with you the strategy. If you want to become a, pre a friend of President William Bruton, create five jobs for our young people and you'll be his friend. Create opportunities for our young people, you'll be his buddy. I feel good that an occasion has been set aside and prepared to discuss the future of our young population. They are the future of this nation and we are genuine when we say so. President William Ruto, I and all of you here, we are not getting any younger. And let us not pretend that we are getting younger. Time is going. We must prepare succession management in governance, in entrepreneurship, in business. We must prepare to hand over if, essentially along the way. I know many people don't like that topic, but it's the truth. And uh, when you fail to plan, you plan to fail. We want a situation where in your board, boards of directors, you have two, three characters below the age of 35. So that when decisions are being made about the company, and you are saying that the youth are important, they are part of the decision-making process. We want our young people to be on the decision-making table. Next year, we'll be hosting the Youth Connect Summit. And we'll bring 10,000 youths from the whole of the African continent to come and interact with our young people here to share ideas on intellectual property rights, on the tech industry, on their role in governance. Our young people have told them they cannot sit at home and wait for anybody to come for them and tell them that they are the leaders of tomorrow. Nobody will come from you at home. You must get out and take your rightful place in the development of this country, in public governance, in private enterprise. So I want to tell KEPSA and your leadership, you are our very serious partner. And with this youth agenda you have here, you are our friends. I want to confirm CEO, President William Ruto is ready any day for the Roundtable Conference. Any day. Especially if agenda number one is youth and their employment and business opportunities. Tomorrow, the day after, at night, over the weekend, President William Ruto is ready and available. And I've said many times and many people think I'm joking. The President and I we have no children we are bringing up. We are not looking for wealth. We are just available to serve 24-7. 24-7. That is why the president has given a policy direction about time management. He has told us anybody who keeps business people waiting will meet his wrath. Yeah, because you are here over 150 people. If we waste your time here 30 minutes, one hour, the loss of the economy 
is unquantifiable. And we are just one person. So why do you want to keep 200 people waiting? You think you are so important. Who the hell, whom the hell do you think you are? <laughs> you know, you know, you know, most of you, let's be honest here, had been poisoned against us very much by the previous administration. That we are thieves, that we are corrupt, that uh, we are bringing wheelbarrows to ordinary children who are now as a working elsewhere. The wheelbarrow is just a tool of trade, it's a symbol. You know, people who have not studied literature do not know what is a knowledge. They do not know who, the power of figurative language. The wheelbarrow was just a symbol of hard work by ordinary people. So you had been poisoned against us. That will be against industry, will be against enterprise, we will be killing big businesses, we are only thinking about the hustlers and ourselves. The hustler fund, the biggest beneficiary of the hustler fund is the big private sector. When we give 50 billion to the hustlers to trade, they have no factories. Where will they buy the wares? They'll come to you. They'll come to you. That 50 billion, you guys are likely to pick 40 billion out of it. So you should clap for us. <laughs> and you know, <laughs> these guys were despising us because of our background. Because our fathers are not known. Because we didn't go to schools that are anything. But they didn't know that despite that, we have some little brain. And because of continuously engaging the people of Kenya, we know a thing or two of what needs to be done. And let me tell you, the government of President William Ruto has agreed the tool for governance is continuous engagement with those stakeholders. You will never go wrong when you engage. None of us, not President William Ruto, not I, not Ababu, has a monopoly of knowledge. We know very little. We keep on learning every day. Every engagement is enriching. We shall continuously engage with KEPSA so that we borrow from what you know. We tell you what we know. We put the ideas together and come up with a win-win situation. My boss, the president, has said, a good idea must give way to a better idea. And a better idea must, of necessity, give way to the best idea. And that can only be done by continuously engaging stakeholders in a respectful and dignified manner. And I want to tell you, I saw some people saying, oh, regarding Ashagwa, became deputy president after just having served as one term as MB. What they don't know is that that is not the real thing. The real thing is public-private partnership and the role I'll play in this administration. After 15 years experience as a public servant, our 15 years experience in the private sector, and five years experience in the legislature, that is 35 years. I am a good bridge between the public sector and the private sector because I understand both. And my work, my work that I've been given by the president, public sector reforms are in my office. And my duty is very simple and clear. The president has instructed me. Can you align the public sector to support the private sector. The work of the public sector is to be supportive and to facilitate the private sector. The public sector in our administration will not be a bottleneck. It will not be a hindrance to doing business. Their work is to ease business. Their work is to facilitate the private sector. I told the KEM people, when you walk to an office, 
you cannot tell the color of the original wall, the, the, the wall, because it's full of licenses. You know, we have agreed, we are collapsing all those licenses in one. Where does a serious company get time to move from one office to another office to another looking for licenses instead of looking for new businesses? You know? We have told our people in the government, you cannot criminalize enterprise. Government must support enterprise, not criminalize enterprise. And we have discussed with the KRA, and now we have reached a consensus. The president had a working lunch with them on Saturday, and we have agreed. They all collect very aggressively three trillion, and we, have, we ask everybody to pay taxes. It's a responsibility. But we have asked them to create a dignified engagement with taxpayers so that it is easy and friendly. But that does not say we don't pay taxes. Let's pay our taxes, but let us treat taxpayers with dignity. Because they are, our, they are the clients, and they are the, the client is the most important person in any engagement. So that has been worked on. I urge all Kenyans to pay their taxes on time, appropriately, and we have asked KRA to devise a friendly tax regime on how to engage the taxpayers because we need that money to provide services. But in a nutshell, the policy of the Ruto administration is less and less government in people's lives and more and more services to the people of Kenya. That is the policy. So I want to, to say our young people, Waziri Abab, we must get nearer to these youths. And you can see they are looking for us. Why they were called me Rigjis because they want me to be nearer them. They feel more comfortable. And I've started when I was invited to Kisumu for the music festival. My plane was full of young legislators below 35. When I went to Rwanda, I went there with 14 young members of the National Assembly. Because by staying nearer these young people, you get to know their thinking, you get to know their fears, you get to appreciate their capacity, you get to know how to engage with them. And I have asked our CS about, you must do things differently. The Ministry of Youth cannot just be about just appearing when there is a youth event. Reach out to KEPSA. You know, and I'm telling you, this great guy called Ababu, he is all yours. Engage him. Yeah, he's all yours. And Waziri, anywhere, ukisikia vijana wanaweza saidika, you arrive one hour before the people arrive. Because we have a problem. I spoke in Kasarani and people thought I'm mischievous that I'm speaking so truthfully in front of visitors. But this truth needed to be said. We have six young million people without jobs. That is the truth. And it must be said. How do you confront challenges unless you first say there is a challenge? When you go to a doctor, the first thing he assesses and decides what is the problem. Then he diagnoses how to deal with it. But if you pretend there is no problem, how do you deal with that? Something you pretend does not exist. I want to tell our young people, the Ruto administration is so focused on your issues. You, don't, you wouldn't know our meetings with the president, private and public, 40% of his conversation revolves around the youth issue. We are so clear in our mind. So for our private sector, please, we have agreed that the way to go and to develop this country is PPP. So be ready. Water sector, dams, distribution of water, 
will be done through public-private partnership. So you people be ready and we'll continue to engage with you continuously. And we are receptive people and we are humble, we are not arrogant. We will allow you to tell us what you need to tell us. Even if it is ugly, even when we are doing badly, please don't cheat us. You know, the previous government had a choir called praise and worship. <laughs> Their work was just to praise and worship. We have dismantled that choir in government. As we want the truth, when we engage in that round table conference, CEO, please look at the president on the face and tell him, here you are off the mark. Here you are doing the right thing. Here you can change and you take it positively. The only praise and worship team we want to come across is on Sunday in our churches and we'll be quite happy. But in these other engagements, please don't come to praise us, to tell us how wonderful we are, oh, nini, nini, atutaki, zaubi wongo. Just tell us the truth. Where we are doing well, encourage us to continue doing well. Where we are doing badly, please tell us off. And I encourage the opposition, the people we defeated, please take up your role. Mutukosoe. Na mutuambia, na mutuambia vizuri. Hapa apana, hapa muko sawa, hapa muna anguka, hapa you are too lazy. This one improve here and we shall take it positively. Provided this constructive criticism. Let us not develop the culture of praise and worship in a country. Because the country will sink. Let us be truthful. Let us tell the leadership the truth of what people are saying what the situation is like. And that is why when we came in, we removed the subsidy on fuel because it was not sustainable. It was a lie. Subsidizing unga was a lie. It cannot go on for long. We are spending 8 billion shillings in a month. How can you sustain that? And you have seen through interventions, the price of unga has started coming down. Gas, Kameko, the one with 1,600 now, is below 1,000. Edible oils coming down because the interventions are practical and long-lasting. But you cannot run a country on a lie, on deceit, and tell people you are doing, you are subsidizing consumption. You cannot subsidize consumption. You want to subsidize production so that effectively the consumers can get the benefit. We want to run an open government that will be truthful to the people of Kenya. And where there are challenges, we will tell the people of Kenya their challenges. So the private sector fraternity, please, we are your friends. You are our serious partners. We are available on short notice. We are willing to engage candidly and truthfully to build this country. The future of this country is in supporting, facilitating the private sector to work around this economy. And we don't want to cheat ourselves that we have a very good situation. We are down, but we'll be up by being truthful, by engaging in a candid manner and by allowing anybody in this country who has a contribution to make that contribution. So please don't leave this country to we as the political class. You are part of this country. You have a role to play. This is your country. We have no other country to go to. Let's build this country together. And I'm sure if we put our efforts together in a positive and a candid manner, will make some progress somehow along the way. So for our youths, work hard and stay focused. Stay focused. And you have people to hold your hands. I saw the young people speaking here. I felt good that they have hope. And they are asking, please don't give us handouts. Don't give us fish. 
give us a net and show us how to, to use it. It's such a challenge to us, especially in the political class, that the youth are asking, enable us, facilitate us. We want to be drivers of this economy. We want to be active participants. We want to be given a chance. And you know the youth have the advantage of energy, passion, zeal, and they are also very hopeful. So let us support our young people. So I want to say thank you to Kepsa. What you are doing, you don't know. You don't know how I feel about it. You don't know how the president feels about it. That some people somewhere have sat down and decided to have a program for our young people to hold their hand and support them and prepare them for the future. It's such a beautiful thing. And therefore, my, my, you have, you have literally made